So this is what I've done for them. I guess the thing that's important to notice is just the interchangeability between f of x, f dash x, f double dash x. This exercise that we're going to be doing is only going to be focusing on the second derivative, but I don't like to present it as just the second derivative because it's part of a bigger picture of what you've done in year one, which is the first diagram and the second diagram. And people need to remember that all three of these are things that you can be asked about. So I wanted to have this as a bit of a summary of what they look like. I think I've done them right. The ones I get confused of which one is convex and which one is concave, but I think I've got them the right way around, yeah? Concave is when it's greater than zero. Sorry, convex is, this is convex, is what I mean to say. This is convex is when it's greater than zero, which is this shape. And then concave is when it is less than zero. And again, that also corresponds to the idea of local maximums and local minimums. I also did these ones here, decided to use other colors. Um, and again, you can just spot that first derivative is corresponding to these uh, maximum minimums. Second derivatives, this is all of these blue dots. When I'm talking about a car, the blue dots would be when this, it's neither swerving left nor swerving right. It's kind of going straight forward at that particular point there. So it's a bit harder to tell where the points of inflection are because it looks like quite a straight line. So there will be an exact point where it has got like a, a full straight line that we've got there, okay? What we're going to do is we can squeeze in before the end of the lesson. It's basically been me talking the whole time though today. Is we're just going to do this now in some practical problems to say like what it corresponds to so that we can try some of them at home. So here it says find the range of values of x which the function f of x is concave. So if we want to find out for when it's concave, first of all we need to find out what f dash x is, which is obviously 3x squared plus 4. Then we need to find out what the second derivative is, which is just going to be 6x. If we want it to be concave, then we want f double dash x to be good. We, it's concave if f double dash x is less than 0. In other words, if 6x is less than 0 or if x is less than 0. The mark schemes will accept that or that. OK? The spec yeah? It's, you don't have to write that statement, but I just think it's safer to write that down to say why you're doing the particular thing that you're doing. Um, and again, I'm just going to quickly show you what this looks like on Desmos. So it's x cubed plus 4x plus 3. Now, it's kind of hard to even tell. Um, let's change the x-axis so that it's between 1. So there's actually a point of inflection here. You can kind of see at that point is where the steering wheel would be straight. And for this whole section of it here, it's got that kind of arched sort of like cave shape of it like turning to the right. Okay, and then at that point there, it then starts swerving to the left instead, okay? This next one wants us to show that it's convex for all real values. So you know what to do. We'll find the gradient function, which this differentiates to 2e to 2x plus 2x. We then differentiate it again. So you can see how this is the applications part of differentiation. You just get 4e to the 2x plus 2. And we can see here that 4e to the 2x plus 2 is greater than zero for all values because what can you say about e to the 2x? It's always above zero because e to the 2x is always greater than zero. Hence, I'm saying hence and writing then. Hence, the f double dash x uh, is greater than zero for all values, so is convex. So really, there's, the only stuff we've added in is what the second derivative actually means. You're going to have to use all the other differentiation skills now, and if they say, talking about its concavity. Concavity means whether it's convex or concave. We call that concavity. 
whether it's concave or convex. I don't think they would use that word, but if you, the property of how convex or concave it is, is it's concavity. Um, if they start talking about that now, you just know it means do the second derivative and then investigate what's going on if it's greater than, less than zero, stuff like that. So can I go on to the last example before we then do some practice? It says the curve has got this equation, find the range of values where the curve is convex and find the coordinates of the point of inflection. Pretty straightforward. So y is x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 5. I'm going to just use the y notation. I'm not going to use uh, f notation today just to show you the variety. So I'm going to find the gradient function. This differentiates to 3x squared minus 4x minus 4. And then I'm going to find the second derivative, because obviously that's the same as f double dash. And you just get 6x minus 4. If it is convex, we know that the second derivative is always greater than 0. So 6x minus 4 is greater than 0. In other words, x is greater than 4 over 6 or 2 over 3. Bit of a throwback. How would I put that in set notation? Anyone remember? You would do curly bracket x such that x is greater than 2 over 3. Okay, just to remind you of how you do set notation in case you ever get asked to put your answer in set notation. Did you forget that? I should have put that on my memory page. It's not on there, is it? And they also wanted to find the coordinates of the point of inflection. So you need to know now point of inflection if the second derivative is equal to 0. In other words, 6x minus 4 equals 0 or x equals 2 over 3. And then you plug it in and you find out what y is. So 2 over 3, answer cubed, minus 2 answer squared, minus 4 answer plus 5. And you get 47 over 27. So the coordinate is 2, 3, 47 over 27. And I'm just going to show you that on Desmos because, again, it's nice to actually see where that is. But I'll lock the board, freeze the board, so you can keep copying. So it's x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 5, is it? Yep. And the coordinate was 2 thirds, 47 over 27. Okay, so last thing I'm going to show you. Here is the curve. This is the point of inflection here. You can see at that particular point, this is where it is concave. This is where it is convex, that point of inflection. Driving with the steering wheel, it's completely straightforward, okay? That bit is swerving to the right if you were driving along this pathway. That one is swerving to the left. This one, the second derivative is less than zero. This one, the second derivative is greater than zero. I'm just going to tell you the way I think of it as being less than zero is when I'm stood at this maximum point here, everywhere I look, if I was stood on the top of the hill, everything is going down. So the second, so it's negative. And if I was stood at the bottom of this valley here, if I was looking to the right or to the left, everything is going upwards. So it's positive. That's actually how I remember with the second derivatives and first derivatives and stuff. Okay. And then I'm going to set you some homework from exercise 9i.